What is going on YouTube? Fascinating graveyard today. We're here at the Lakeview Cemetery here in Cleveland, Ohio. Today we're going to visit the grave of Ray Chapman. He is the only major league baseball player ever to be killed by a pitch. Ray Chapman was born on January 15th, 1891 down in Beaver Dam, Kentucky. And he made his official Major League debut with the Cleveland Indians on August 30th, 1912. Now, back in those days, baseball was quite a bit different than it is nowadays. Number one, people didn't wear baseball helmets. I know it's weird to think about that now, but back then, there were no helmets. Now, you would have guys that occasionally would get beamed by baseball and they kind of haphazardly created their own protective helmets. Uh, you would have a couple guys wearing modified construction helmets. Uh, you would have guys basically just putting sponges underneath their baseball cap. It wasn't until uh, Philadelphia Phillies manager Pat Moran uh gave all of his players some kind of protective headgear. Uh, he basically put a bunch of uh, cork uh, into the insides of that team's uh, baseball caps. But as people kept getting hurt, people getting seriously hurt, um, baseball did not enforce the rule where you had to wear batting helmets. Now also in baseball at that time, one popular thing that pitchers love to do that was very dangerous for the batters is the good old-fashioned spitball. Yeah, so a spitball is basically what it is. Uh, it's just a uh, pitcher that kind of just spits on the ball. Uh, Ed Walsh, who pitched uh, in the leagues from 1906 to 1912, is the one that got it real popular. Basically, when he spit on the ball... Uh, in theory, and it does work, it changes like the tra the trajectory of the baseball, so it doesn't like move or rotate as fast as it would, so it kind of has that knuckleball effect. So you had him starting with the spitball, and then you had other people starting to use petroleum jelly on it, uh, tobacco juice spittle, uh, mud from the ground. You would have baseball <laughs> pitchers just take you know, the dirt from the ground and just rub the ball. So not only are you changing the way the baseball spins and the way it moves in the air, but now the baseball looks a lot like the surrounding environment you're playing in, so you really can't see the ball. And uh, that's what a lot of people suspect happened on August 17th of 1920. So Ray Chapman, who that year uh, he was batting uh, over 300, and I believe he had about... 17 home runs at the time. Uh, he was a pretty good baseball player for the Phillies. Uh, he played shortstop, and I believe um, he's sixth all-time on sacrifice hits. And I believe he leads the single-season record of sacrifice hits with 67. And three different times in his eight-year career with the Indians, he batted over 300. So on that day, the Cleveland Indians were playing the New York Yankees, and he was you know, matched up against a pitcher by the name of Carl Mays. Now, Carl Mays, he was one of those pitchers that pitched that weird submarine style. So that's like kind of like that Dennis Eckersley, just like a really weird way of throwing. I don't even know how you throw a baseball that way. And he was known uh, to be basically a, a uh, intimidator, if you will, because he would pitch really close and inside of you. So if you were batting against that guy, you already knew this guy was going to be thrown right in the inside of the plate. But sometimes he would lead you out of the plate, on the outside of the plate, and then he would throw right down, right next to you. And you'd be like, whoa, you know. Yeah, a lot of pitchers were very wary of going up against Carl May. So on that day, Ray comes up to bat, and Carl Mays, you know, probably doing the old spitball thing, probably all doing the old dirt on the ball thing whatever it is that he put on the ball uh, a lot of people suspect that he had spit on the ball and, and spit on uh put basically spit out tobacco juice on it to make the ball dirty that way you could you couldn't really see the ball very well so according to some eyewitnesses that were there that day uh 
Carl Mays just winds up and throws the ball, and you hear that crack. And you can hear it all throughout the stadium. And Carl Mays gets the ball. It grounds to him. He gets the ball, throws it to first base. Okay, Ray's out. Except for Ray didn't hit the ball. That ball ended up smacking him in the head at an estimated 80 to 85 miles an hour. And the ump looks at Ray, and Ray's standing there, and it, immediately the umpire calls for medical. So they come out there, and Ray, at this time right now, he's conscious, right? So his last words were, he basically said, uh, I'm all right, tell Mays not to worry. And then he started muttering about a ring because he had just gotten engaged to a woman named Katie. So he starts saying, Katie's ring, Katie's ring, and then he falls unconscious. They rush him to the hospital, and then uh, he dies the very next morning, very early morning hours. Uh, he either died of possibly like a fractured skull or, you know, maybe, you know, brain swelling or what have you. Uh, the only man to ever be killed by a baseball pitch, and even though he died... They still did not implement a change in the rules in terms of making batters have to wear head protection. They didn't enforce it. Get this. Now, different teams in the league enforced their own rules, but it did not become a league-wide thing until the National League started enforcing it in 1956, and then the American League followed suit in 1958. But... If you had been playing baseball for a certain amount of years prior to that, you were grandfathered in. You didn't have to wear a helmet. So you had guys throughout the 70s not wearing a helmet. As a matter of fact, Bob Montgomery, 1979, played for the Red Sox. He's the last guy to ever bat without a helmet on. 1979, that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. And all those people that got hurt... And all this and that. And it took over 30 years, way more than 30 years after that, to finally enforce the rules. Crazy, crazy story. Okay, so this is the grave of Raymond Johnson Chapman, the only man to ever be killed by a pitch in Major League Baseball history. And of course, you have several uh, souvenirs leading Cleveland Indians hats and baseballs and yeah. And that year that he was killed, he was uh, talking about retiring because his uh, wife-to-be, uh, her father was a well-to-do businessman, so he was just going to quit baseball and go work for the family business, which kind of tells you how much these guys were making back in those days, which probably wasn't very much, if anything at all, because a lot of guys that played baseball and football, they had regular jobs in the offseason. Kind of crazy. I don't think baseball players really started making the money that they make to where they didn't have to work a second job until I think the, I want to say it was like the, the, the late 40s is when they started making more money. And then even in football, even into the 50s and 60s, guys were still working regular jobs. It's crazy. Okay, rest in peace to Raymond Johnson Chapman. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed my very quick story, a little bit of history on baseball, the spitball, batting helmets. I wish I could have gone a little bit more in depth. This is one of those times I really wish I could have made the video a little longer. I ain't gonna lie, I don't have my gloves on and my my hands are freezing. My hands are freezing, so I gotta get out of here, guys. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Be good, y'all. Fascinating graveyard. Peace out.